Russell Leidig here. This is a beautiful photo from the Hubble Space Telescope of a distant galaxy, which of course means we're going to be talking a little bit more about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And in particular in this video, I'm going to show you exactly everything you need to do to verify my claim in the previous video that I could find Gaussian noise buried in Gaussian noise. Now, if you haven't seen that video entitled SETI Acceleration via Entropy Transforms, uh, please do that first, otherwise this is not going to make much sense. All right, so I'm under Linux, but this is going to be pretty much the same no matter what OS you're using. So first of all, uh, visit agnentropy.blogspot.com. And uh, this is sort of the landing page for all things Agnentropy. Uh, so the source code for the Agnentro toolkit is here on GitHub. So we're just going to open that up. And Agion is my stupid, meaningless user ID. All right, but what you want is Agnentro. So we're going to clone or download, download zip. And very quickly, uh, you should obtain that. And let's just unpack that. So this might be in a different place uh, on your system, but basically I go into my downloads and I extract it. And you're not gonna need the uh, Agnentro master folder. So I'm gonna take Agnentro and I'm just gonna copy it into my home directory. So there it is. And it's full of C files. Okay, great. So the next thing we're gonna need is some SETI data for that to operate on, but uh, you need to know where to get it. So go into your Agnentro directory and type make SETI demo. Okay, so we're not going to run SETI demo except to just find this address. So, oops, TMP SETI demo. All right, and here's all the documentation uh, that comes with that, and you can read it if you want to run the demo. But right now, we just need this URL because this is going to give us the SETI quest data, which is going to give us our 2010 uh, Gaussian noise sample. Uh, and by the way, the Breakthrough Listen project has released a lot more SETI data. Uh, since I actually developed the software, but it's in a slightly different format, so it would need some light pre-processing uh, in order to use it with EgnentroScan, whereas this is just flat out uh, raw data. So what we're actually looking for is the galactic anti-center data. Uh, so here we go, yeah, uh, 3991 megahertz, and this is at uh, 2010, May 7th. All right, we're going to take that, and uh, just randomly I picked uh, file number file two of three here. So it's pretty big, it's two gigabytes, it's gonna take you a while. Um, and then they basically repeated the same experiment at the same megahertz and the same dish alignment, uh, 2010, 1008. All right, so let's fetch that. And I randomly picked file number three. So 8-bit 03 is what you want. Now that's gonna take a long time to download. Fortunately, uh, I've already got it here for you. So I put it in this little SETI folder and this is what it looks like. And uh, so that we're clear, here are the hashes of the files that I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split the 2010-1008 file into billion byte chunks. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to sandwich 10,000 bytes of the main data. And uh, split works in Linux. I'm not sure if it works in other operating systems, but you can figure out how to do this. All right, so split creates these crazy file names. I'm just going to get rid of the tail bytes that we don't need. And let's, let's just make things sensible. So let's call the first file, oops, not 5a, it's 10a. Sorry about that, 10a dot dot. And xab is going to be 10b dot dot. All right, so, so there we go. We have October, the first billion and the second billion bytes. And then I'm gonna copy the May file. And let's just copy that to 5 dot. And then um, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm just gonna chop it all the way down to the first 10,000 bytes. So we're going to truncate uh, dash b dash s 10,000, five dot dot. Okay, so what do we got? Yep, 10,000 bytes. All right, so now let's concatenate them all into a giant sandwich, um, 10b, okay, and let's just call that 10, five, 10 dot dot. All right, and that should be 2 billion and 10,000 bytes of noise. So smack in the middle of that is May and it's October everywhere else. All right, so let's go back to Agnentro, and now we're gonna make Agnentro scan. So this is our, our entropy scanner, and I'm just gonna run it, and then I'm gonna tell you what all this stuff means uh, while it's running. I'm gonna do an exoentropy scan of tilde SETI 10510. Okay, and I'm gonna do it on bytes with a sweep of 10,000, and I'm gonna show the top hit in ascending order. Okay. 
So what does all this nonsense mean? So I'm running Ignentro scan, obviously. Um, the big capital E means do an exoentropy transform. Um, you probably heard reference in the previous video to exocompressivity. Um, for all our purposes here, it's effectively the same thing. Uh, but exocompressivity is a normalized version, which is more important when we're dealing with lots of different files. But we're only dealing with one file, and, and in particular, uh, one sweep, which is 10,000 bytes. So the sweep is, is the size of the sweep window. And the sweep window, as I've explained uh, in my paper, entitled Introduction to Entropy Transforms, uh, just slides along through the data looking for some kind of, or trying to compute some entropy metric inside the window. So the 10,000 byte window just slides across the whole two gigs uh, looking for interesting stuff. Okay, so that's what the 10,000 is for. Um, so the, uh, the zero just means uh, the granularity is one byte. You can have one, two, three, or four bytes. Uh, one byte is always faster, and sometimes for weird reasons, it's actually more accurate. Uh, so it's gonna suffice in this case, so I just used one byte. Uh, the one just means give me the top one results. In other words, I only want the best result. I mean, obviously, you'd, you'd probably want you know the top 10 or 100 or what have you. Um, but, and then the uh, last value, 1a, um, the one there just means uh, that I want to print out the 128-bit intervals. So yes, they're actually, the entropy values are actually com computed as intervals using uh, basically integer math, not floating point math, because floating point is, is not uh, reproducible. It's not cross-platform particularly well. So uh, integers work the same on every machine. So I actually wrote uh, an interval math library uh, just, just for Agnentro. Um, and so you can see all that detail. Uh, bit three just says, um, tell me progress messages. And so you're seeing this, you know, doing extra entropy transform and so forth. And finally, the bit two of the 1A uh, just means I want them in ascending order. So show me the lowest exoentropy first and, and then the second lowest and so forth, but we're only asking for one result. So we're gonna get the global minimum. Now, uh, if you think about it, exoentropy is um, the information content of the sweep window. So the 10,000 bytes in this case, relative to everything except those 10,000 bytes that's in the file. So, so what we would want is the maximum, not the minimum exoentropy, right? Because basically if it's so unlike the surrounding data, then it should appear to have high entropy from the perspective of that data. Well, as I've discovered, um, when you're dealing with entropy analysis, you can throw your intuition uh, out the window because uh, basically there are, there are weird corner cases uh, such as this one where uh, it turns out that May, the Gaussian noise in May, was actually su of sufficiently lower entropy that it sort of sticks out like a sore thumb. So even though it's really unlike the surrounding data, it still compresses smaller. It's really unintuitive. <laughs> so so you have to kind of really drill down on what you're looking for sometimes in order to decide on what the appropriate parameters are. But um, it's it's not too bad. Um, and, and like I said, for all practical purposes, it's ON here, uh, ON complexity. Um, and so by the way, obviously, you know, I'm searching for a 10,000 byte signal uh, and I'm using a 10,000 byte window. Well, you know, how magical is that? Well, the truth is if I made it, you know, a bit larger or a bit smaller, even, even maybe two or three times bigger, bigger or smaller, it wouldn't really matter because basically the, the interesting stuff would still stick out like a sore thumb uh, if, if there's anything to be found. Um, so anyhow though, uh, so, what is, so what does all this mean? So this is an interval. Um, min and max interval. Uh, technically the max is uh, one unit of the last place less than the max. So it's, it's not quite a, a min and max thing. Um, but basically what, what this is, is um, it's an interval that says, uh, this is how low the entropy, exoentropy could be and this is how high it could be. And this is the lowest such interval, meaning that its mean technically is the lowest such mean uh, in the entire file among all the sweep windows. And it occurs uh, starting at this base offset. So it's 10,000 bytes starting at this base offset, which is a zero based base offset. So what is, so what is that offset? Well, let's, let's look at it here. So if I put that in hexadecimal, here we go, uh, 1 billion and five in base 10. So as I claimed in the previous video, um, we're off by only five bytes uh, out of those 10,000. And it does indeed find uh, most of those 10,000 um, in, in a sea of 2 billion bytes of noise. Um, so there you have it. I could show you a few more techniques with Agnentro scan, but uh, I just wanted to prove the point. Um, so hopefully later uh, we'll find uh, more interesting ways of analyzing SETI data with entropy scanners.